mountain in the sky. Don't you see the round feeling blue? There's no need to cry if you take you where we lie. Nothing is impossible for you. You can move that mountain, you can move that mountain. Don't wait till tomorrow's time today. service tonight. Uh, we just enjoyed the beautiful singing. And the choir prophetically told us tonight that you can move the mountain. Yes. Remember the children of Israel said they, they sang and the wall of Jericho fell down flat. Yes. And they said something, they said do not will wait till, said you can do it today. That means tonight. So in our singing tonight, we want to move the mountain. Uh, we thank them. They uh, played the orche orche orchestration for us. Be still for the presence of the Lord. Then they sang, the choir sang, move that mountain. So are we ready to move the mountain now? Uh, no, we are not ready. The kind of song that the children of Israel sang, that is the song we want to sing tonight. The song that moved the mountain, the wall of Jericho. We can do it tonight. So, Bro you will lead us in the song we're going to sing, uh, Celebration in 88. Bro Shea. God bless you. As, as we sing athlete this evening, I pray that the Lord will come amongst us. Amen. We're going to start by declaring our worship for the Lord. Let's open to 88. More precious than silver. If the Lord is more precious to you than silver, than gold, or any other thing on this earth, I want you to lift up your voice as we sing.
Let's open to 391. Sweet, sweet spirit. We are yearning for that sweet spirit, and we believe it's already here with us. Let's sing sweet, sweet spirit. We sing also one stanza. Let's open to 129. 129. Great and mighty. Amen. Our Lord is great. Yes. He is mighty. Yes. He is mighty to save. Yes. He is mighty to heal yes. and to deliver. Let's see. Amen. know that as we proclaim him to be great and mighty, he is going to come amongst us and show himself as mighty. Let us sing again 3353, five, Victory in Jesus. Amen. That mighty, great one is coming to give us victory today. 353, yeah.
good singing. Our last song before prayer is the song of nations. That song says, may we be a shining light. 439. 439. I want us to sing all the verses of this song. If we look at all the words of this song, it's a song and a call to go into all the nations and do the work of our Father. So we are going to be singing all verses, songs of the nation. in prayer, we call on Brother Samuel Oni to lead us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence here. We thank you for starting with us. Uh, we are expecting, we are anticipating that you pour down your spirit upon us. Oh, as many that have come with one need or the other, that you are going to answer their prayers. Those that are seeking you for salvation, you save their soul. Those seeking for sanctification, you sanctify them. Those looking up to you for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you fill them. Oh Lord, as many are seeking for re-anointing, Lord, re-anoint us. We commit the rest of this service into your hands, the rest of these um, specials, the testimony, and at the altar service, Lord, meet us, exceed our expectations. In Jesus' name we pray. Welcome once again to uh, youth service tonight. Uh, we pray that the Lord will shine through us. Amen. That's a beautiful song. You know, beautiful prayer, beautiful song. Um, for our announcement, as it was announced in the morning, on Tuesday, we're going to have um, usual prayer meeting at 8.30, 8.30 p.m. All right, then on Friday, we'll continue the Mind Invader uh, that will start uh, at 7 p.m. on Friday. Let us remember we can invite our friends, those around. We can tell them to attend our Bible study. Mm -hmm. uh, also on Sunday morning, we have our morning service. We start with our Sunday school at 9.30 a.m. 9.30 a.m. Sunday school. Then at 11 a.m., we have our morning service. Mm -hmm. Morning service for everyone. That Amen. song says, may we be a shining light. Amen telling the story 
the beautiful story of Jesus. You know, you can tell, share your testimony, how God saved your soul. Tell somebody that story. If the person can come to church through that, Amen. we have, like we heard in the morning, we are so lucky to be here. Amen. We are so lucky. God brought us from a different locations. Mm. He, found, he, he, he found you and I, mm. and he brought us here. Mm. And he, he, he made our life beautiful. Amen. He brought us from, from, from ashes. He gave us beautiful uh, ashes. Yes. You know, we can tell our story. There are so many people, you know, having so many pr problems to deal with. Yes. We can tell them that Jesus Christ is the answer. Yes. Yes. May we be a shining light. May, God, may the light of the gospel shine through us this Amen. week. Um, tonight is another night. Yeah. Yes. We don't know next week, right? I don't want to say well, I'll give my testimony next week or when next time we have. But we know about now. Yeah. So it's a testimony night. Mm. It's a, a youth testimony night. And we want to give room for those who are 45 and below tonight. <laughs> 45 and below tonight. Let the gospel of Jesus shine through you. Amen. We can start practicing that as we hear, as we are here right now. When they, when they sing, let's shout amen. amen. Right? When uh, they give testimony, let's support that person. Somebody told me uh, this morning, said, when we're singing the uh, permission to say that. Said when, we, when the quartet were singing this morning, said somebody sat at the back. I was saying, hey, amen. amen. The person, he was the one who sang the first part. He said, that really gave him encouragement to really sing the song very well. Amen. You can be that shining light tonight. Amen. Somebody giving that testimony. Maybe the person is fidgeting. When you say, hey, amen, amen, your amen can give him that support amen. or give her that support. Amen. May God help us to do that. Amen. So tonight, we're going to have our service will continue now with a teenage group. You should be craving for that song. Yes. Okay? They want to sing Victor's Crown. Amen. And we just sang, Oh, Victory in Jesus. Amen. You want vic victory? You want to be a victor tonight? Amen. So when they come up there to sing, you say, Amen. Amen. As you are singing, say, Amen. Amen. And you get, you get that crown, the Victor's Crown tonight. Amen. So as they sing, two of them will give us a testimony, their testimony. We'll start with them. See, if the, Lord has, if the Lord has done something, has, God has done something for every one of us here that we can just stand up and say in one minute, right? Yeah. So if God has done something, of course I know God has done something for you. So you say that to us less than two minutes, less than one twenty seconds. We have the time there, one twenty seconds. So two of them will start with us, the testimony. Then after, the, after their song, they open the testimony for us. Then there will be a last special. The last special again is, Newborn feeling. Amen. I don't want to say like say somebody say we all we be, we have a reborn tonight. Amen. We all we have that newborn feeling tonight, Amen. and um, we know we have a spring break, so you can enjoy that spring break with that newborn feeling in your heart. Amen. So the quartet, the male quartet, will give us that song. Thereafter, there will be a sermon tonight. Amen. You know, we want to say amen to when the person amen. is standing up. You know, I was in camp and um, in the, one of the prayer meetings, uh, Brother Eric said we should encourage the person that wants to, don't disappoint him for saying amen because he would like to hear amen. He's from East Coast, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't disappoint him. So we are not, we are not in um, East Coast. We are here. Don't let us disappoint that person tonight. So let's say amen. amen. Okay? And you know what will happen tonight? I love that word. I want to borrow it from the pastor. Say, God will do abundantly. God will exceed. You, you all come with an expectation, right? Yeah. Our expectations. They said, God will exceed our expectation. He said, He will abundantly above all you can think of, ask of, or think of, or imagine. You can imagine that somebody will be saved tonight. Amen. You can imagine that somebody will be sanctified tonight. Amen. You can imagine somebody will be baptized tonight. Amen. You can imagine that there will be healing tonight. Amen. Let's enjoy the service.
um i would like to thank god this evening for all he has done for me um god's love found me and he has been very faithful to me ever since then i am thankful for for his faithfulness for his mercies for his love i really do not deserve it um one thing that god always reminds me is how much i've grown like he has made me grow since last year it has been like usually because it was first time me being on my own and managing everything by myself and i was like always worrying always worrying but then god always told me that you can tell me about the little things about the small things just like say say it to me instead of like worrying about everything and since then God has moved mountains for me he has helped me in every aspect of my life in my school work in my day-to-day -day life in my friendships and my relationships God has been been with me and I pray that he continues to take me on in Jesus name I want to thank God for everything he's done for me I want to thank him for saving me and sanctifying me I want to thank him today for his healing power back in 2020 um, around March, I noticed a lump that was growing on my neck, and I got really nervous about it because I didn't know what it would be. And so then we started praying about it, and I started icing it, and so then I decided to just look up what it would be potentially, and it was not giving anything good. It was all like bad news. And so they said online, if it's there for more than two weeks, you should go to the doctor urgently. And so I was like, okay, I'll pray. Like, it's probably maybe I slept the wrong way or anything like that, that by two weeks will probably be gone, that we've all been praying. But by two weeks, it was still there. By one month, it was still there. By three months, it was still there. So then I got really nervous, and I was like, what it's saying online? Like, it's really bad. I don't want to be diagnosed with anything. So I continued to pray. By five months, it was still there. Six months, it was still there. But I thank God that at the seventh month, seventh month, I had even kind of forgotten about it. I just like left it, and I knew God would take care of it. And at the seventh month, I turned my neck, and the lump was gone. I just want to thank him for everything he's done for me. I will be the most beautiful ingrate tonight if I didn't testify to God's goodness. Actually, I could remember the 4th of September last year, God brought me to Pullman. Amen. It was a miracle. And it can only happen when you give your life to Christ at a very tender age. You know, I will always thank God for my parents that led me to Christ at that age. You know, they, they really helped me to know God at that age. And then from that little age, I started developing a relationship with God. I know myself that I cannot run away from God, even though I tried. You know, when I wanted to gain admission, I, I tried on my possible best at my 100 level to just stray away. But you know what God did? When I stepped my feet to Adekunle Ajash University, I just landed into two sisters. They happened to be the sister coordinator for the fellowship. Two of them, like one was in another fellowship, the other one was in another fellowship. That was how they grabbed me. I couldn't run anywhere. I just know that, oh, my life is real to Christ already. And do you know, since that time, God has just been there for me. I looked at how God has, you know, taken me by hand, how he has ordered the steps of my life. You know, when the pastor was talking about where God brought him, like Akpata, I remember what, where God brought me as well, like, Myself, I haven't been a brilliant student. I have been a student of grace. Because I look at how God has just helped me through the journey, like coming for PhD in Puma, like how did it happen? It's just God. Yeah. It's because God, Jesus overcame. And I could remember at, at my place of work, one of our bosses said, oh, I'm not going anywhere that I'll be under him. I'm like, no, I will not be under you. I know God is taking me somewhere. And do you know God or not that? I could remember particularly in one class, after one class with my student, I just knelt down on that uh, uh, at one of their seats. I told God, God, you have to prove yourself on this admission. And do you know, God answered that prayer. And here I am today, six months in the United States. Oh my God, it can only be God. I give God all the glory. As Sister Motorari was testifying, I remember something that happened to me also. <laughs> I, I thank God that God saved my soul. Amen. He always has to start from there. Because that is the only foundation that can give us whatever we want in life. It's a sure guarantee. And I thank him for that blessing that he sanctified and filled me with his spirit. Um, before I also came to the U.S. to study, I remember that I worked with a group of NGO guys. I work at the Ministry of Health in Ondo State and we work with some development partners that are being funded by the U.S. government. So those people are actually young people like myself. 
But we were in the midst of a conversation one day, and they were making jest of those of us that are civil servants. And they started picking on people, and they picked on me. And one of them said, oh, see Mr. Sheyi, he's going to die here. <laughs> it was in a very condescending way. You know that it was in a matter of months when God made all these things happen. I didn't plan to come to the U.S. I planned going to Germany. I paid agents. I'd done everything. Then the U.S. opportunity came. I did it by myself. Nobody, I didn't pay anybody for anything. Even people that I knew here, I didn't tell them I was, nothing was happening, you know. And God made it happen. As she was testifying, I remembered that this is what God actually did for you. What was supposed to be a point to scorn me, God turned it to a testimony for me. I give him the glory. Thank God for the power of God unto salvation. Um, before I got saved, God has been patient with me. I was born into a Christian home. We, the Bible is an open book. We read it, pray about it. But um, I had so many questions. Questions about how do you get saved? I come to church, I see people praying, hitting the benches, shouting, and then when they get saved, sometimes they run to the back of the church and they start chasing them, rejoicing with them. And I felt like, how does this happen? In fact, how do you hear from God? So I had a lot of questions and had faith issues because I was like, how do you get to that point you receive it? But God was patient with me. I got to a time I felt, well, I, I've given up that I cannot be saved again. I'm just for the devil, so don't, I shouldn't bother. But God keep, kept, kept wooing my heart. I remember after my mom died, we went to a beach um, um, Christmas party. And while we were playing at the beach, Badagri Beach, I just found myself being drowning. And what I called for help, the more help I tried to call for, water keep coming into my mouth, and I got no hope. That was the first time I can say I had a connection with God, deep in the water. And I said, just give me one more chance. Just give me one more opportunity. And I just found myself at the shore again. Uh, you would have felt, oh, immediately I will pray and be saved. No, it didn't happen that year, not even the next year. But God was still patient with me. But one June 29, Sunday evening like this, I, it was not a fancy sermon. I just, I, I just was fed up with the whole thing. I was like, I want to give up. But that day, God saved my soul. Amen. I bless God for that. Amen. I want to thank God for saving my soul. Um, this afternoon, something happened. Um, Ebenezer, Ebenezer dropped me home. And uh, I was about to go home. And then um, the next night, I saw, I saw a dog running towards me. And then uh, the next moment, I was on the floor. And then I fell, I fell on, back, um, like on a pile of snow. And then the dog was coming after me. And then the next time, I just remember I was just shouting and uh, like gyrating my legs. and. Trying to trying to just make a reaction and shouting, um, so I, I mean it turns out I scared the dog away. Thank God that um, nothing happened to me, and uh, yeah the dog went back and they tied it on the leash and the owner was of dog was asking if I was okay and uh, I told her I was fine and uh, yeah but, but I thank the Lord for for preserving me and uh, it could have turned out to be a bad incident but thank God that nothing happened. I also want to thank the Lord for what he has done for me. Uh, at age 11, the Lord brought me into apostolic faith. I wasn't born here, but he gave me the, the sonship right at that, at that age, and the Lord saved my soul. I was in, in the classroom, I read a tract, and um, I prayed and God saved my soul. I lost that experience sometimes, but I had to come back to God and pray and God saved me and knew. But God did something for me that I, while I was there in the morning, when the pastor was preaching, and I said, um, if I have the opportunity tonight, I will say thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, God brought me from nowhere. We were seven in the family, and I happened to be the first person. Uh, I was, I'm the, the fifth. And, and that the Lord just, when I gave my life to him, he just changed everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord gave me the firstborn role in my family. Amen. 
and that was what exactly what the gospel can do. Yes. Uh, at a point in my life, I had an accident. I was in the classroom, and um, guys were playing, and um, they, we call it louvers in Nigeria. That's glass, the window glass. And it fell. I was sitting very close, and it shook my leg, my left uh, foot. And for like um, two weeks, I couldn't walk. They took me to the hospital, they did everything, and said it, it was, you are healed. You know, at times if I'm walking, I just have a pinch, a sharp pinch on my leg. But one beautiful night, one beautiful evening, you know, I just told my sister, I said, I'm going to Antony. She said, but you went in the morning, she said, would you like to go with me? And she followed me, and I was there. Immediately I entered, the choir just finished singing, great physician. Amen. And uh, it was Brash showing Kari, later when showing Kari that preached that night. He said, Allah the repairer is here tonight. And I rushed. The sermon was like maybe five or if you were there, like five, seven minutes. Very short sermon. And I went to the altar to pray. I said, Jesus, if you can just heal this leg, I don't know what is in there. And they said they were, they did as you said, there were nothing there. Mm. Do you know that night I got back home in the presence of my family members, my mom that we've been telling about the gospel, she was there. A broken, five broken bottles, pieces of broken bottles came out from another, not the place that was that they, that we have this car, and not that place entirely. Mm. Five broken bottles, and immediately I can show you my children the sign, the the, the the scar where I had that was the way they the place they they stitched, and on that place where the bottles, five pieces of broken bottles came out from, and with that. The Lord brought my mom to the gospel. Amen. I want to give the rest of my, my life to him. God has been so faithful to me. To me. Please pray for me. Amen. I want to read you testimony that I'd like to share. Um, first of all, I thank God that God saved me back in 2014. And I know I've had my lukewarmness sessions, but God has always called me back to himself and he has been my friend so far. Um, I want to thank God that I graduated last semester and it's Amen. been... Um, it's been an overview testimony that I haven't shared, but I just thank God that just looking back, like to all my classes and everything I took, I know there are sometimes I didn't understand anything the professor was saying. Like I'll be in class, I'll be like, God, <laughs> I might not drop this class or like I don't know. But I'm just thankful that God um, has been with me, he helped me, gave me wisdom and understanding. Even my my last semester, my last GP, I was like. Based on my classes, I was like, this GPA might drop, but then it increased, and I was like, ah, God is a wonderful God. And I don't know what God, what God has for me, and I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I'm just, um, everyone just pray with me that God will continue to hold my hand and continue to lead me. Pray with me. I want to thank God that Jesus brought me to the gospel. He saved my soul and he sanctified me. And then uh, it took a while for my baptism, but then I was baptized. And I want to thank God that there is power in the gospel, that when God saves, he's able to keep, and that when we commit our ways into his hand, he can lead us to the very hand. There are many times I don't know the way. There are many times it's not clear. But I thank God that he that holds tomorrow has been by our side. If I'm here today with my family, uh, people that know the story, that, that knows the details, they will understand. And I want to thank God for the people of God that prayed. I want to thank God that God gave us a shepherd here and also a selfish man. Uh, if I'm here today, it's only because of his grace. Uh, God used him for us. And since we are here, I want to thank God that God can keep, God can protect. Sometimes this bird was not hitting and I was complaining. And I remember God told me one Sunday, like, where do you take him when you were in Nigeria? You take me to the people of God and they pray for him. Ah, there are still people of God in here. So I took him there and then I said, please, he needs prayer. And two ministers prayed for him. And since then, his appetite like double up. <laughs> I want to thank God for that. Please pray for me and my family that God will keep us to the very end. God a lot to tell you about the Lord today. How he took me in and washed my sins away. Fill me with the spirit and amazing grace. Promised me a mansion and a resting place. Told me I'll be in the shout and sing. 
How we gonna make the hills and valleys ring? Maybe that's the reason that I feel so fine. All my weary troubles have been left behind. I've got a newborn feeling dwelling in my heart today. Because the love of Jesus came into my heart to say. I never realized that I had lost my way Until the love of Jesus turned me sins away I've got a newborn feeling in my heart today When I stop to think about the present day How the worldly people pass the time away Makes me kind of wonder what the future holds How we're gonna ever reach the sinful souls We can only reach them if we kneel and pray Try to draw a picture of the judgment day Live a life before them that will testify Prove you have the blessing from the Lord on high I've got a newborn feeling Dwelling in my heart today because the love of Jesus came into my heart to stay. I never realized that I had lost my way until the love of Jesus washed my sins away. I've got a newborn feeling in my heart today. I've got a newborn feeling dwelling in my heart today. Because the love of Jesus came into my heart to stay I never realized that I had lost my way Until the love of Jesus washed my sins away I've got a new one feeling in my heart today Feeling in my heart today Can we open our Bibles to Psalm 103? Psalm 103. I'm reading verse 8. Psalm 103, verse 8. And it says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. I want to believe you love the word of God yeah. and you believe the word of God. Yeah. And the short admonition God has for us tonight is titled, The Mercy of God. Yeah. The Mercy of God. Yeah. That Psalms 103 verse it says, The Lord is merciful. Yeah. And at the close of that verse again, it says, And is plenteous in what? In mercy. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. You know, when we talk about the mercy of God, uh, it's, it's, can I say, a virtue, a desire, a quality, a characteristic that we all must constantly desire. And you know, I want to believe one of the greatest prayer anyone can pray is, Lord, have mercy on me. God is never tired of hearing that. When the sinners pray that prayer, God is ready to answer. And when those that are even saved, even praise that prayer, God equally answers. And I believe tonight is a night of abundance of mercy. Do you want mercy tonight? And it shall be yours in Jesus' name. You know, I want to give us a scenario. Um, quite some years back, I was um, in the university that time, I had the news. I was in school. I had the news that one of um, uh, a family father, you know, God has thousands of ways we treat. He works, and we can't question him. He was the one that preached the night I got saved. I can remember very well. I can't forget. You know, I was in school. I just had the news that um, he was going on the bike. Maybe by adventure. Yeah, it was his time to go. And I had, okay, he got hit, you know, back there in our country, so many things happened. 
he was hit by a truck on a bike and he died instantly. And the man ran away. And when I heard, I was troubled. You know, the first thing on your mind is they need to catch that man. And you know, they ran after him. According to the news that I had, they caught him. To the layman, to the ordinary man, we know what should happen to that man. But when they took him, they said he should go. They said he's forgiven. I believe that is mercy, right? Yeah. And when we talk about mercy, mercy has to do with leniency. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you talk about mercy, judgment is by the way. No. Justice is by the way. No, no, yeah. But you know, mercy places us on the right side. Oh, yeah. And we want to thank God because... Jesus Christ paid the price for us. Do you know as beautiful, as handsome, as good looking, as nice our testimonies are, if not for the mercies of God, yeah. it wouldn't have been. Yes. And tonight I want to tell you, if you are here, you are hearing online, you've never known anything of this mercy of God, tonight that mercy is open to you. Amen. Because somebody has paid the price. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The mercy is free of cost. Oh, yes. But anyway, to you it is free. You can pray two, three minutes prayer. You connect with the mercy of God. You get your salvation. Yeah. But somebody paid the price. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody died on the cross. Oh, yes. um, Amen. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Can we read? Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. We're going to take that now. It says, Betsy was wounded for her transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are what? We are healed. That is the mercy of God that is open to you tonight. The price has been prayed by someone. You know, looking back at our generation, looking back into the times of old, we are not meant to stand in the presence of God. And if you look into the olden times, if you look at the, the, the times of the children of Israel, once they transgress, what follows? Judgment. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth. No mercy. When your animal enters someone's farm, you pay for it. When you kill someone, you are going for it. But God in his infinite mercy looked for a way. That how can I ransom man? And he sent someone to us. And that is the story we have always been telling us from this pulpit. And the Holy Spirit has always been talking to our hearts. And that is, God designed a package. And that package is the package that will connect us to him. And that package is what we are talking about tonight. And that package is the mercy of God. Amen. I pray tonight that if you have not enjoyed that mercy, you will open your heart. You will embrace that mercy. Because you are, you are, you are meant to get the judgment of God. But God in his love is saying, no, I want to be lenient with you. And you, you, you can think back into your life, look back and see things you have done. You feel like, wow. But God is saying you are not to be judged. Mercy is waiting. And by the grace of God, if you open your heart tonight, you are going to get that mercy. In the name of Jesus. And somebody says, who needs this mercy? You feel it's not for you. Let's read um, a place in the Bible. And that is in um, Romans chapter 5. Verse 12. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Uh, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. And the place we are going is, it said, For that all have what? Have sinned. That means the mercy is for everyone. And we pray tonight that if you have not embraced that mercy, you will open your heart and accept it in Jesus' name. Yeah. This place is simply telling you, maybe you are feeling within yourself, I've been nice, I've been good. I was given birth to in the gospel. Fine, all good. But the Bible is telling us that for all, I've done what? All have sinned. And that makes us, you know, Isaiah chapter 3 verse 6 tells us that all we like sheep have done what? Have gone astray. Everyone, that's the Bible saying it. Everyone have gone astray. But we want to thank God because some people have the testimony here tonight, as you have had in the testimony, that they have embraced this mercy of God. Yes. 
And if you have not embraced this message another time, because you have gone astray, you can see so many places you have gone to and you feel you can't make it to God. You can make it. And tonight is your night of mercy in Jesus' name. Tonight is your night of mercy in Jesus' name. When we talk about this mercy, so many people have enjoyed this in the past. Because God wants us connected to him. God wants us to be his children. As young people, he wants to put our life under his care. And once our life is under the care of God, through this mercy of God that Jesus Christ has bought with his blood, we, are, we can throw our future into his hands. We can throw our lives into his hands. And we are sure that he will, make, he will help us to make it. And he says in the past, so I want to quickly look at some people that have tapped into this mercy. Some asked for this mercy and they got it. And there are some that equally did not ask for the mercy. But God in his own plenteousness of mercy, if I can use that word, he brought them out himself. And we have the case of Lot. I'm not going to read it in the Bible. When the judgment was sent, it was meant to be destroyed with that city. Even when the angels went there, they said, destruction is coming. The man said, no, he wanted to, he was dragging his feet. But do you know, our God is a merciful God. God dragged him out. Maybe tonight, maybe you are in the, in the house of God, you just felt like you just came. Maybe you don't even have anything in your mind to pray about. That is the mercy of God that has brought you here. And maybe you are watching online and you just straight on YouTube or somewhere and you just come across the church and you are hearing sermon. That's the mercy of God bringing you out. And I believe those of us that are in the presence of God, we are here to ask, isn't it? That's another class of people. And by the grace of God, we are going to receive. Do you remember that man in the Bible, the blind Bartimaeus? When mercy was passing. If he had kept his mouth quiet, he won't receive mercy that night. But that man said, tonight is my night of mercy. He cried with a loud voice. Did you receive mercy that day? Yeah, we have the account of that adulterous woman too. They brought her. She was meant to be killed. She was meant to be stoned to death. And they brought him. But do you know, mercy said no. Yeah, that's the mercy of God. He was meant to, they caught him in the heart. Maybe you, they caught her in the heart. Maybe you are here and the devil, someone is going on, he's playing so many things in your head and he's feeling like, ah, if, you should, if these people knows how bad you are, no mercy for you. There is mercy for you. Amen. When they took the stone to stone her, Jesus said, no. This one is qualified for mercy. And that day, she got that greatest experience. And I know tonight is your night. Remember that man, too, that had stolen from people. That man that possibly had killed people, had killed a man. Who knows? He was an armed robber. He was a criminal. He was placed upon the cross, remaining just a few seconds for him to die. But he looked upon the mercy, the, the, the plenty, the, the, the merciful God. Did he pray long? He did not even kneel down to pray. He did not even close his eyes to pray. He only said a word. Remember me in your kingdom. He got mercy that day. Amen. Tonight is your night of mercy. Amen. Let's remember to the case of Peter. We are going to pray very soon. Mm-hmm. He was saved. But he got to a time he was getting distracted. Amen. Jesus told him, walk upon the sea. Amen. And he was looking around. He started going down. Amen. Ah, the man realized, I need the mercy of God. Yeah. And he cried out for mercy. Amen. Did he receive mercy? Yeah, he I don't know what you need mercy for. Uh, I don't know, I don't know your prayer request. But tonight you want to say, Lord, have mercy on me. Tonight you want to say, Lord, have mercy on me. And the Bible, the mercy is saying tonight, that say even to the righteous, that he shall be well. And even tonight, that there is salvation on this altar. May God answer our prayers. As we sing for the night. Save, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land, climb the steeps and cross the waves, on what is a lost command, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, while it's on the rolling tide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, troubles in us far and wide.
Father, we are here at the altars of prayer. We are asking for your mercy. Send down your mercy. Save souls tonight. Sanctify tonight. Fill us with your spirit tonight. Let us all go home with rejoicing. In Jesus' name.